Hey everybody, Shane here. Welcome to 38 Deep Dive. I don't know what episode it is, but I'm happy to say that it's the one we're finally actually going to go on a deep dive on 30A. We're actually gonna go diving today. Hey, hello, hello. This is Allison Wiki. Yes. Great to, Good see, to you. see you. He is the brains behind what we're diving on. The OG dive master here. Walt <laughs> is the you, one man. that's gonna take us down. That's right. You are the only game in town when it comes to taking people out diving. This is Dive 30A. Dive 30A, we do uh, guided snorkel tours, trips out to the underwater museum. We just wanna uh, get people underwater, help them explore more than the shore. And without having to take a two hour boat ride from Destin or Panama yep. City. That's uh, we like to say for a one and two tank charters, we can either have you back before brunch or back by lunch. I've, I've done the beach launch now a few times. We're gonna need your help today. Okay. Been... <laughs> All right, let's go dive. After more than 20 years of shooting, producing, and hosting adventure travel shows for various networks, it's time for a deeper look into all the epic things I can find in and around my own backyard. I'm Shane Reynolds, and we're going on a 30A deep dive. You wanna do it? Let's go. I am really excited to be diving with you today, Allison. I've dove on this before, but anything kind of unique like this, I always like to dive in with the, the founding fathers, and the only thing yeah. that's better than that is, is diving with the founding mother. So this is an underwater museum yes. right here off of Grayton Beach. Yeah, it's just been uh, one of those things that was introduced as an idea at a board meeting, and you know, total pie in the sky. I was just like, oh my God. You know, as far as deploying these artificial reefs, why aren't we deploying sculptures? Like, right. let's add another dimension. From a diving perspective, it's it's it was a necessary thing. This is mostly a sand bottom. It's a, you know, if you're snorkeling or diving, the majority of what you're going to see is, is sand. Yes. So putting something like this in place really gives it an edge, and it gives you something to get excited about when you're diving here. Right, and it takes the focus into the water. Why 30A, this area has become famous in the first place. It's not because of the things that we've built. It's because of this unbelievable clear water and you know, take people out there. Remember why we're here, the water, the animals, the conservation, everything. So, you know, it's, it's education masked in art. So let's go dive. Yep. <laughs> let's get in it. Oh man, Ooh. this water looks incredible today. Yeah, you get it set, I'll do the last leg. All right. I'm launching this bitch. Ready? Well, that was easy. I mean. Guys, this is ridiculous. <laughs> we're just here. A, just a little bit ridiculous. Couldn't have picked uh, a better day. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it is the Lake of Mexico today. Yes. What's the first stop, Captain? First stop, we're heading to the Grayton Turtle Reef, about 250 yards offshore, real close from where we launch in Grayton. I'd say less than a five minute ride. So did you have something to do with the uh, the, the, the artificial reefs as well? I didn't have anything to do with these. This was all Suara, and, um, I, but I had been watching their progress. And as soon as this one was deployed, just walked off the beach and swam out there. I was like, I have got to see what's going on out here. That might have been the oh, seed. That's the, oh, yeah. And so you're an artist? How did how, yes. you get to this point? Yeah, well, I've been uh, um, working as a professional artist since around 2000, and we moved down here. That's when I started doing individual paintings. You know, okay. I was like, there's a need for a certain kind of painting here that I'm not seeing, which is um, actual representation of the area. I started painting what I would hang in my own house, which um, I became known for the span of the western lake trees and I like right. to think about you know the Native Americans coming over the dune for the first time and seeing this water and using the lakes for you know the natural resource that they are and where they come out into the gulf I mean just thinking about that is super inspiring to me. Well I'm assuming that this is the tur turtle reef where, where there's, yep. a, paddle, Basically here, there's yep. a paddle board already there with some oh, snorkelers yeah. on it. Yep. Well uh, I say we uh, free dive this Let's one. Let's do it. Oh, the music's so good today. Wow. 
Well, that was a good uh, little taste test. Amazing. Really nice and flat. The heart rate is fish. nice and low. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Had some nice spade fish. Had some nice uh, water temperature. Good yes. visibility. Uh, that's the best I've seen it. Right. Sure. I felt like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to know about what we're going to be seeing, but I want to just point out okay. that this right now is the polar opposite <laughs> of what I had experienced <laughs> earlier this year yeah. by witnessing the uh, the installations of some of the new installments. Let's let's do a little flashback. So this is Jennifer Steele, the executive director at the Cultural Arts Alliance. Welcome to the UMA deployment free party. This is our third deployment, our third installation, and by the end of the day, we will have 25 sculptures down at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico in the underwater museum. Put it down. First one down. History in the making. It's got to be exciting watching your work go to such a unique destination. Yeah. I'm going to get ready to dive. Two full suits on in a long time. All right, so here's the, tr here's the trick. Oh, feel that. It's nice. Warm. <laughs> you feel your, if you fill your suit up with that before you jump in, then when the water that comes in that's supposed to warm up off your body, it isn't this initial shock. And what's interesting is that most of the people that have done these sculptures, now we're getting real, you know, a lot of actual sculptors, but a lot of us that, that did it the first year were not sculptors, you know, we were just like, we're doing this, we want to be a part of this, we're going to make it happen. So there was such a huge learning curve, but we really have some great sculptors right. down here now. And So um, do you have one? Yes, so mine was the anamorphous octopus, it was made out made out of steel and it was an optical illusion. So I thought it'd be a really cool illusion for under the water. So tell me about what we're looking at down here. We're about to go down. I think we're going to start at one end and kind of do some concentric circles if you're into that. Yeah. We're going to go down and take a look and swim around everything and take stock. Let's do it. We're dropping right down on the Dawn Dancers by Shahini Ghosh. And right there immediately was a bait ball just totally swarming the piece. And the fish were shimmering and it was just magic. I think we were both kind of mesmerized there for a good few minutes just looking at it. Yeah, for sure. The unique thing about this is that it seems like there's, there's fish at each installment that, that kind of claim as their own home. Uh, each one has a bait ball and each one just, just, it just covered in life. It's pretty incredible. El Plastico is sponsored by 38.com and we swam around that for a bit and has a ton of growth just on the surface and around the whole bottle and also another bait ball totally covering it. Yeah, I like the, uh, the eco bug. And, and, that was awesome. And ironically, uh, you know, a lionfish, which is an, an eco bug within itself, yeah. kind of nestled there in the, in the midst of it. Now we're headed over to the skull. We made it to the center. And, you know, it, being here in its presence, it's so huge. I just didn't remember it being this big. And of course, the growth on it is just a work of art. The colors and everything are amazing. Yeah, I, I've never seen it with visibility this yeah. this good. You know, I typically can only see one installment at a time, and you got to get up close to see the detail. Uh, today is is as clear as it gets. You know, I, I can see multiple installations.
My favorite has got to be the, the genie yeah. and the lamp. What, what's the name yeah. of that? Um, that one's called Three Wishes. That's by Ingram Amiris all over. And just the, the shape of it and the way it sits. And it had a huge lionfish on it just around the bottom. And every time I swam around, he kept his eye on me. And I, of course, kept my eye on him. Yeah, and, and when we made a wish on the lamp, uh, I, I wish that we'd never see a lionfish there again. <laughs> <laughs> Another favorite is the bee grate. It's so interesting to me because there is a bait ball around it, but all the fish are inside each honeycomb and they just kind of hover there for protection. It was great seeing uh, how much the, the how much growth since we saw the deployment of some of these uh, just a few months ago, and uh, wow, it, it's like night and day. Right next to Hope is the Let's Not Blow This by Kevin Riley. He's a two-time sculptor for UMA, and it has the dandelion at the top, which is full, just full of life, whether it's um, marine growth or fish. I mean, that itself is its own ecosystem. You know, as sad as it was to see some of the casualties down there, you know, like you said, this is, this is a learning experience. Yeah. So. Of course, the famous I Found It, again by Ingram and Marisol. Um, that's the diamond ring. And again, just perfectly placed. The scale is great. And just magical. I could have stayed down for two more hours. <laughs> Being, you know, one of the creators of UMA, I was just so excited to see, and it goes back to what being an artist is. A lot of us will talk about being unemployable, and we can't have a boss, and we're just, you know, we can't work for anybody, but this is our work. The greatest thing to happen to me from being an artist is bringing other people joy, and this is just envelops it completely to be able to, now I'm bringing the animals joy, you know, <laughs> and yeah. people, and it's just amazing to be a part of something that's actually doing something for the environment.